Welcome to Church Online. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Mavuno Church. My name is Michael Obo Onen, and I'm one of the pastors here in Mavuno Church, all the way in Kampala, Uganda. Even as you start to watch this, what, this broadcast, please do like, subscribe, and follow us, and turn on your notification bell so that every time that we start our broadcast, you will be notified that we have started. Greetings to all of our campuses right here in the 256, wherever you're watching from, whatever the time you are all welcome. Now, all through the month of June, uh, we have been going through a series called Family Matters. And right now we are right in the month of July. I also wanna just say happy new month. You're absolutely welcome to a new month. But last weekend, as we went through the series, Family Matters, we talked about a culture of honor. And we said that you, you, your honor says more about you than it actually says about the person that you're trying to honor. And we concluded by saying that if you honor your father and your mother, then you will be blessed. Why? That you'll be blessed to break all the family strongholds that you're experiencing in your family. You want to break all the generational curses and all the spiritual bondage. And when we talk about breaking family strongholds, there are usually two frequently asked questions. One is, what are generational curses and spiritual bondage? Now, these are negative patterns or consequences that are passed on to an individual because of negative words that are spoken um, to them by somebody who, is in, who, has a, who has spiritual authority over them, or maybe because of sin, sinful actions that have been done by maybe an ancestor or somebody even in your lineage. Now, these may open a door that gives um, the enemy a right to frustrate the future generations. The Bible lists at least five sins that attract the curses of God. Some are occultism, examples of which are witchcraft, um, divination, New Age practices. Uh, and you can read that even in the book of Deuteronomy that talks about some of these things. Sexual perversion, idolatry, oppression of the poor and the helpless, but also shedding of innocent blood. Now, because of these sinful actions, generational curses or bondages are established. And through the weeks, we have talked about many of these negative patterns that exist in our family. Patterns like alcoholism, addictions, homosexuality, poverty, sickness, and disease. Some of these things that follow us from generations to generations. But many of these things happen because there has been a spiritual door that has been open. But the second um, most frequently asked question is, I'm a, a pastor, I'm a, I'm a Christian, so... Can generational curses and, and spiritual bondage affect my family? After all, Jesus came to be a curse for me so that I can be free. So how can the curses affect me? Now, I believe that these curses and bondages can and do affect us, but they may not have eternal effect on us, but they can greatly frustrate and reduce one's quality of life here on earth. Now, generational curses and bondages are limitations to a Jesus formula. And now, to be, to be limited means to be restricted, um, resisted, and is restrained, like you're on a chain. Many of you have pets and animals at home. If they're, if they're tied and they're restricted by, by a chain or by a rope, there's only a particular sphere that they can go through. Beyond that, they can't go because they have been, they have been restrained, they have been restricted. And that happens to you as a Jesus follower when all these generation, generational curses and spiritual bondage is over you. Now, these, these things can sabotage your family purpose and thereby delay enjoyment that God has placed even in your destiny. I mean, I can tell you personally, in my family, even as we do the, the family tree, one of the things that we notice, one of the negative patterns that we notice in our family was that there's a lot of, uh, of, of early death and alcoholism. And uh, uh, you know what this does? When we have early death, that means that there, there are a lot of, of children that are becoming orphans. There are a lot of spouses that are becoming widows and widowers and, and, and so much of people's destiny is, is cut short because of, of loss of these people who need to be in a space of looking after them and having authority over them. So the question I wanna ask to you today is, how then do we break this limitation of generational curses and bondage. Now, in the Bible, 
one family that was chosen and blessed by God, and yet they still experience the limitations of generational curses and spiritual bondage. Now, that was Jacob's family. So Jacob's family had issues. They had strife. They had favoritism. There was jealousy and there was fear. But I believe that the, the root sin or the root bondage in their family was actually um, the, the, the negative pattern of deceit. Now, we even read the name Jacob. Jacob means he who grasps the heel or he who deceives. This guy was born and he had already been given the name of being deceitful, of, of he who grasps the heel, is a manipulator. Now, we first notice the pattern of deceit even with his grandfather, his grandpa, Abraham, who in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 10, lied to the king of Egypt so that the king or even anybody else would not kill him. He lied that his wife was actually his sister so that people would not kill him. And then 14 chapters later, in this same family in Genesis chapter 26, now Jacob's father, Abraham's son, Isaac, tells the same lie to another king about his own wife. Like father, like son, sometimes we don't know that this is happening, but because of this uh, generational curses and spiritual bondage, it can move from one generation to another. And now when we look at his mom's side, things were even worse than they were on his father's side. Now, Rebecca, his mother conspired, uh, she conspired with her son Jacob to con her own husband into leaving his inheritance for his son Jacob, the one who she favored more. Now, this created strife between the, the brothers Jacob and Esau. And now, when this happens, when their mom hears about Esau's plot and plan to actually kill and to harm his brother, she now manipulates her husband into sending her more favorite son over to, a, to, over to another land where her brother Laban was in, in the pretext that he needed to find a wife. But unfortunately, even Rebecca's own brother Laban was even a greater deceiver than she was. So many of you have heard the story even as you read. So after working for seven years for his bride, Rachel, Jacob gets conned by his uncle Laban at the last minute and is given her older sister, Leah. Now, he's forced to work for another seven years so that he can also be married to Rachel as well. Now, like that's not enough, Laban happens to be a boss from hell because you realize that he had to work for almost 14 years to be able to be married to both Leah and to her sister, Rachel. In order for him to get the wages that were entitled to him as he worked for his uncle, he had to counter corn. He had been corn now, he had to counter corn to receive the wages for all those years of working. Jacob is married to two sisters who are competing um, to have babies to win his affection, including even donating their maids to have children with him. How sad is that? The competition was so high to the extent that at the time, Leah even had to bribe her own younger sister so she could sleep with her husband. Is it her husband or, or, or her sister's husband? There was that, all that confusion going on simply because of all this strife. This family was so, so, so messed up. But that's what we call generational curses and spiritual bondage. But even as we go on in this story, Jacob does something that changes not only his life, but the trajectory of his whole family's life. So if you do have your Bible and your gadget, let's read from the book of Genesis chapter 32. And I want to read from verse 22 all the way to verse 30. Now this is what it says. That night... Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. And after he had sent them across the stream, he sent them over all, or sent them over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? 
Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. Now, when you read that story, it's interesting that at a point in his wrestling match, Jacob realized that his opponent was actually God himself. Jacob has to confront himself and his situation, so he asked God to bless him. He says, God, I will not let go until you bless me because Jacob needed a turnaround in the life of himself, but also in the life of his family. And so when God asks him his name, Jacob answers and tells him his name. Now, in doing so, he does what is un the uncomfortable thing of admitting the truth about himself. He acknowledges his name and what it means. The name Jacob meant the schemer, the manipulator, the deceiver. That was his fallen identity. That's, that's who he was. Now, it wasn't until he acknowledges this that God eventually blesses him. Verse 28 says, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob would no longer be the deceiver, but he would now be the overcomer. Kama. Even the nation that was promised to his grandfather Abraham would bear his name. How amazing is that? He completely changed the trajectory of his family. God can remove the limitations of your life and break you and your family free. Free from the generational curses and the spiritual bondage and make you a blessing even until the next generation. Now, God is calling us to wrestle in prayer to break the limitations of the negative patterns in our families. We must close the doors that have plagued our families by wrestling with God in prayer and fasting and break the yokes of all the generational curses and the spiritual bondages that we are experiencing. Now, I'd like to share, even as we go forward, how we can actually break and suggest to you how we can break these generational curses and spiritual bondages from the place of prayer. Now, the first thing that needs to happen is that we need to recognize. We need to recognize the negative patterns and the roots that are in our life and in our family, just like Jacob did, even as he acknowledged his name, he acknowledged the fact that, look, in my family, there exist all these negative patterns in my family that need to be broken. You need to take time and hear from God and allow him to reveal to you the negative patterns that are in your family. Now, many times we are unaware of the negative patterns that are in our family, but even as we hear God in this place of prayer and fasting, that God would expose them to us and make us aware of these negative patterns in our families, not only for us, but also so that our family members will too be aware of these generational issues that are destroying our family. So number one, recognize, but number two, repent. Confess the ancestral sins. Now, twice in the book of Nehemiah, when you read chapter 1 and chapter 9, Nehemiah was, was one of those leaders, those fearless influencers, was one of those, uh, uh, those family stronghold generational breakers that we read about in the Bible. Now, we see Nehemiah making a prayer of confession for the sin of the forefathers that brought about the exile of Israel in that time. It wasn't even about the sin that he had committed. But because he acknowledged that in his family, that that sin and that those generational curses and spiritual bondages, uh, bondage existed, he actually said a prayer of confession and repentance on behalf of his family. The time is here and the time is now that we would actually step in the gap and would actually um, intercede on behalf of our family so that those family strongholds would be broken. But the number three thing here is that we need to pray for release. That through the blood of Jesus that would declare a break and release of your family members from the negative patterns, the curse and the bondages that exist. Confront every pattern with God's promises. You know, it's, it's, it's not enough for you to be able to, to, to recognize and say, look, this is the sin um, that, 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 exists, that exists in my family and that you repent about it. But you're also able to release it. And you're so able to release it, that you'd confront the curses and say, no, not in my family. No, not in my generation, not in the life of my son, not in the life of my wife, but that would be able to actually confront every curse with God's promise. And then fourthly, that we would replace. 
Identify areas where you need to replace the negative patterns with positive patterns. Start teaching and practice loving each other where there is strife that there would be love. Do a family gathering where, where you even ask the parents, maybe it has never even been done before, where you ask the parents and say, look, bless us. I want you to bless us. We want, we want, you, we want to replace those curses with, with, with declarations of blessing over us. I know many families, and I've, and I've heard many stories from, from friends of mine where they say, look, their parents actually have spoken negative things. And sometimes parents do that knowingly or unknowingly, that, that they, they make certain negative declarations over their children. But that, that, that would be replaced with blessings, that parents would bless their children, but also that children also, um, uh, vice versa, bless their parents. There's so, many, there's, there's so many of us children that have, that have caused a lot of pain for our parents because instead of blessing them and instead of, instead of honoring them like we learned last week, that we're, we're actually cursing them and we're causing them so much pain and saying so many negative things because of the flaws that we have, we have seen and experienced in our parents, but that we would, we would bless them. Possibly even start maybe a monthly or a weekly um, space where you're able to come together and actually bless one another. Perhaps even do an annual prayer where you say, look, at the beginning of the year, during the middle of the year, at the end of the year, we're going to come together as a family and actually bless one another. So that we are intentionally um, replacing the negative patterns with positive patterns that would help us break the generational curses and the spiritual bondage that our family um, is experiencing. I mean, there are basically four R's that we just mentioned there. We mentioned that we need to recognize, we need to repent, we need to release, and we need to replace. Now, this has been a, a very short conversation, but I'd like us to take some time, even in this moment, that we would wrestle with God as we break those generational curses and spiritual bondage. The time is here and the time is now. Now, I don't want you to postpone this because you know sometimes we can procrastinate and say we will do it and then all these things come up and then we do not pursue these things. But right here, at this moment, I want us to break those generational curses and spiritual bondage. I want you to mention them. I want you to break them. I want you to call them out. All those negative patterns, addictions, alcoholism, homosexuality, poverty, sickness, disease, divorce, late marriage, early death, all those things that exist in our families, that we would call them out and that we would break them today in the name of Jesus. That as we follow through, uh, as, we, as we follow through on, the, on this pattern, that, that we would do these things, that we would recognize them and that we would acknowledge them like we said, it's important that you acknowledge, you recognize and acknowledge that, look, these patterns do exist in our families that we would become aware. That we would repent. We would repent on behalf of our families. But also repent on our own behalf. Because some of these things, yes, we are the ones who have committed these sins. We are the ones who have spoken negative things. And we need to repent on our behalf, but we also need to repent on behalf of our families. So many times, even as I do my family tree, I'm like, like all these negative patterns were existing. How come nobody addressed them? How come nobody said something about them? And you know, it's, 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 it's very, it happens a lot in our African families that we'd rather not address. In fact, a lot of our, a lot of our parents and our ancestors rather say, you know what, it happened, and so it happened, and so you want to wipe it away. But yet there was an issue that needed to be addressed, that needed to be broken, called out, and that that bondage and those curses would be stopped right there and then that we would plead the blood of Jesus and receive our freedom in this season. That we would speak God's promises and replace those negative patterns. Where you declare scriptures and say, look, I will not die, but I would live and declare the word of the Lord in my family. There's still so much to do that you would be able to experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, not when you're dead. That you declare scriptures and say, look over your family, look, that it is God who has given us the power to make wealth. And so, Father, we receive the power to make wealth. This family would be wealthy. I remember praying that prayer one day when we were going through certain family challenges. And I'm like, you know, if we were wealthy, all this would just go away. You know, 
would just be able to solve these issues. It won't be a question of looking for money or trying to mobilize. No, we'd have actually just sorted some of these issues. That we would pray concerning our families to break those yokes today in the name of Jesus. And so I want you to take time and actually pray these things. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17 says, From now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. That as we break every generational curse and every spiritual bondage, that we will declare freedom in Jesus' matchless name over these family situations. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you, O God, Heavenly Father, for these things that you have exposed to us, Lord, this morning in the name of Jesus. That as we recognize these family patterns or negative family patterns, Father, we repent today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask that you release us, O God, Heavenly Father, from these generational curses and spiritual bondage today, O God. And Father, right now, we replace those negative patterns even as we declare your word over us, O God, in the name of Jesus. We know that you have called us to be joint heirs with you. We know that, Lord, Heavenly Father, that when we are in you, O God, that all things have passed away and all things have become new. Father, we step even into the newness of our lives this day, O God, even in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We bless you. And so we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. For we pray this with thanksgiving. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. And you all say, Amen. Now, I recognize even, even, even as I've spoken this morning that there are some of you who are in a place of pain, who are in a place of, of dis-ease because of, of some of these negative patterns that we have experienced. And even as we have prayed this morning, I believe that you are set free. But I just want you to pray that God would give you a, a speedy recovery and healing from all that pain and from all that discouragement and all those negative experiences that you have gone through. So if that's you that I'm talking about, I just want you to just place your hand on right there on your chest, on your heart, even as, uh, as I pray for you this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, I want to thank you and bless you for your son, for your daughter, oh God, who's in the place of pain, who's in the place, oh God, Heavenly Father, of just, of just being broken, oh God. That Lord, that I pray that every broken heart would be mended, oh God, that every broken life and destiny, Lord, would be molded, oh God, Heavenly Father, even into the image and your plan and your purpose and your plan for their destiny, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, by your stripes we are healed. And so I pray and I declare healing over your son, over your daughter, over that family, O oh God, which they represent this day, O oh God, even in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless you, O oh God, because we know that your blood is effective. And so over that person, O oh God, right now, Lord, I declare your healing, O oh God, right now, even in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you, and we give you all the glory, and we give you all the honor, for we pray this with thanksgiving in Jesus' matchless name we pray, and you all say amen. But I do not want to end this broadcast without praying for somebody who might be watching right now and saying, Pastor, I have loved the conversation, I have loved the message, but my life is not surrendered to Jesus. I am not born again, but I want to give my life to Christ right now. If that's you, I just want you to repeat this prayer after me today. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I welcome you into my heart. Today, Lord, I want to profess and I want to declare that you are Lord and Savior over my life. I submit my life to you. I surrender to you. And I ask, Lord, that you would come in and take absolute control. Thank you for welcoming me into your open arms, O oh God, today. Thank you for loving me as I am. I bless you, Lord, and I love you, and I give you all the praise. For in Jesus' matchless name, we pray. And you say, Amen. I just want to say congratulations to you who has made that prayer today. And I just want to say that there is rejoicing in heaven 
Because the Bible says that even at the, at the conversion of you and just one soul, say that there is rejoicing in heaven. You that was lost is now found. And I just want you right now, even on the chat, or, uh, you, that you would, you'd actually uh, let us know your name and your number and let us know that you have made this decision for Christ this morning. But you can also reach us on our Mavuno UG family number. Just 789 Nine five zero six zero two. Just um, I'm sending your name, your number, and then let us know of this decision that you have made today. We just want to. We just want to love you. We just want to to follow up on you so that we can walk this journey of faith together with you. Once again, congratulations. Thank you for staying with us even up to this point in the broadcast. I want to pray and believe that your life is different even as you have heard these things and that you have made a different decision this day in the name of Jesus. Just stretch out your hands. Let me bless you even as you go out into the day and to the rest of the week. My Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for everybody, Lord, who is listening to the sound of my voice. And I pray, Lord, that even as they go out into the rest of this week, that you would keep them, you would protect them, O God, Heavenly Father, that you would carry them, O God, Heavenly Father, from this level to the next level, O God, Heavenly Father, in your name. I pray that the works of their hands are blessed, that because of them, Lord, that every uh, generational curse and every spiritual bondage is broken, O God, in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you for even this blessed week that we're stepping into, O oh God, Heavenly Father. We shall be the first and we shall not be the last, O oh God, Heavenly Father. That we shall be the head and we shall not be the tail. But we shall go out and be the fearless influencers that you have called us to be. And so we thank you and bless you and we pray this with thanksgiving. In Jesus' matchless name we pray and you say, Amen. Thank you for staying with us. God bless you and have a lovely week. Remember, please do like, share, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, share this thing with your friends and your family. Invite them uh, so that they too can be part of the change and the transformation that you're experiencing yourself. Otherwise, God bless you. Have a lovely week and be fearless.